Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. This video today should be a really quick one. Several people have asked how to do mitered corners where you have the fabric on the back coming up and wrapping around the front. So I'm going to make a couple of little placemats. You can apply the same technique, whether it be quilts, uh, baby blankets, um, placemats and mug rugs and things like that. You can use the same technique for all of those. So come along and I'll show you quickly how to do that. Before we get started, you can do this in any size you like. You can do rectangles, squares, whatever you like, and it doesn't matter whether you do big or small. I'm going to work on a five and a half inch finished sized square. So I want to have an inch and a half on either side of the square. This is my back fabric, both of these. I'll be making two today. And this is the feature fabric that you'll see on the front. So we'll have the binding coming over the front and this will be in the centre on both pieces of fabric. And because mine are finished at five and a half inches, I'm going to make my backing square eight and a half inches. It will be three inches bigger all the way around. If we want our trivet or mat or quilt to be 10 inches square finished, then you would add an extra three inches. That would be 13 inches squared. What we've got is eight and a half inches, just one piece of fabric. We don't need to stabilize that one. And then I have a five and a half inch square piece of fabric that will be the center of this. And on the back of that, I've stabilized it to give it some rigidity and I've stabilized it with Decaville. Now you can use a lightweight pallon, you can use a fusible Paltex, whatever you want to use is fine. Even your interfacings will work for this as well. So anything that you want to use to give yourself some, some stiffness in your fabric is going to be perfectly fine. There's no rule as to what you have to use. So I've got one back fabric, one front fabric and something fused to that five and a half inch piece. Turn your backing fabric so that it's wrong side up. And as I said, we've got this square is three inches bigger all the way around than my finished size. That means that when this square is placed in the center, I've got one and a half inches on either side of the fabric on all four sides. First thing we're going to do is mark a line at one and a half inches in. So I've got the one and a half inch line on my ruler here. I'm lining that up on the edge of my fabric and I'll just mark a line here and I'll do that on all four sides. And I'll repeat that for my yellow piece. Wrong side is facing up. Okay, now both of our pieces of fabric have our five and a half inch square marked in the center. And if you place that square over the top of those lines that you've just drawn, That's how it's going to look in the center of your fabric. We can set these pieces aside for now. With your fabric, we've got the wrong side facing down and you can see the lines drawn around here. Take the edge of your fabric and bring that up to this drawn line that you've got just on the edge there. You can finger press that in place. And because I'm using a pen that will um, erase when, it, when the heat of the iron hits it, I'm not going to press it just yet. I'm going to fold up all the outside edges up to that one and a half inch line. Once I've done that, I will do the same again, creating a double fold. So this raw edge will fold along that drawn line, creating a double fold. And now we can press that. And 
turn around and we'll create another double fold bet you're thinking to yourself that this doesn't look like a mitered corner it doesn't yet but I promise you it will and the last one Okay, it doesn't look like much yet. Once you've done the double fold on your squares, we can open it out so that we've just got one fold. We're going to make a mark on each side at one and a half inches. When you've made your marks, we're going to join those with a diagonal line. Do that on all four corners. And that will become your stitching line. What you need to do now is fold the fabric in half on the diagonal, but we want to have right sides facing. So bring the right sides together, line up this mark that we've got here with the mark that you've got on the other side and you can pin or clip that in place. Do that for all four corners, line up the markings that you've made So remember, we're bringing the right sides together. Last one. Okay, now we'll take this to the machine and we're going to sew from here, from the outside edge on that single fold only to the diagonal line here. So you can do a back stitch at the beginning and the end. You'll do it the same on every one of these four corners. Let's take these both to the machine and we will sew up those corners. We're going to be stitching directly on that drawn line that we've just done, not beside it. We're going right on that drawn line. We'll start with a back stitch on the outer edge and then we'll finish with the back stitch on that folded edge. And it's as simple as that. I'll do that for the other three now. We have a cute little basket, don't we? Let's finish the other one as well now. Okay, with the four corners sewn, we can trim the excess off. So you'll cut off the excess and then just cut straight up along the edge there so that you can create a finer point. Then grab that seam, push it to one side, poke that out and there's your mitre. Poke all of your corners out, turning your fabric around to that second fold. And we'll press that one and we'll do the same for this one. Just trim off the excess.
and we'll turn it so that we've got the double fold turned over and I'm going to use my product I got this in the mail last week so I found out it's for poking out corners which is what I thought it was for but I got this from Rosie in New South Wales and it helps poke your corners out give those both a good press Okay, these have been pressed and they're now ready to have their fabric inserts placed inside. You might notice one's not a square. I don't know what I was thinking. Measure twice, cut once, they say, and I'm just like a bull at a gate. <laughs> so if you find that you've made a mistake, in this case, it's going to be a design feature, not a mistake. Measure the finished product. This one measures four and a half inches by just under five and a half inches. We need to now cut our centerpiece to size. You want it to fit just right. The finished measurement of this now is five and a quarter inches. So I'm going to trim this back to five and a quarter inches. And we just have to do that on two sides. And this piece can now be inserted into the frame that we've got. So if you were doing a quilt or a baby blanket, it would obviously be a lot easier to get in here because it's nice and floppy. But you've got your mitered corners already prepared and finished. And all you have to do is sew it in place. The other one is four and a half inches by five and a quarter. So I'll cut that to size. And I'll place that inside as well. And this isn't all that you can do with these pieces. I'll show you in just a sec. So these two pieces are now ready to go back to the machine and all you need to do is sew really close to the very edge of your fabric here that will secure the layers of fabric in place. Your mitres are all looking nice and neat, everything's neat on the back and you've got a nice little coaster or mug rug or, or framed quilt. The other thing you can do is grab your favourite photo and cut that to size. So these make great little photo frames. <laughs> How cute is that? You could make your mitered corner into a cute little picture frame. And I would still go and sew that in place so that it sits nice and flat. You could even get a nice piece of vinyl over the front of it or the plastic sheeting, stitch that in place and that will help protect your photo. These are my twin boys. I can't believe they're going to be 30 soon. So anyway, I'm not going to use these photos today, but what we will do is take this to the machine and sew those edges in place. And when you come back to the beginning, you can backstitch and you're finished. And repeat for the other one. So there we have it. A couple of all-in-one mitered corners. As I said, they will be great in any quilt. 
project. I think they'd be adorable as photo frames. Perhaps it's just the content inside. <laughs> Very simple technique, there's no fuss. Uh, it's very, very forgiving as well. I haven't done my corner perfectly and that's because I didn't follow my drawn line. I was off a little bit. If you line things up properly, you'll have no problems at all. This one turned out all right, despite me cutting it to the wrong size in the first place. So you can see how easy it is to make a nice fold over mitered cornered. So that was pretty simple, wasn't it? The fabric just wraps around the front, fold it over a couple of times and you've got a very easy mitered corner. They look nice on the back as well as on the front. Obviously you would go and match up your fabric better than what I've done. But what did you think of the idea with a photo on the inside? I think if I had have measured it properly, I would have put a couple of photos of my boys in there and stuck them on my wall somewhere. So I think that would look really nice too. Perfect for mug rugs photo frames, uh, even as a panel inside the centre of a bag. We might do that one day. Let me know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.